Alrighty guys, hello and welcome back to another part of my camper upgrade slash rebuild. So what I want to do today is I'm finally going to take some weight off the tongue. I've always wanted to build a spare uh, swing out tire carrier. Ever since we used this, I've never taken a spare tire on the road, which is, I know it's bad. I've never gone a flat. Thank God I've been lucky about that. But anyways, right now what I'm going to do is I'm trying to fab up this little guy here. So this is a mount that I had. I don't know how thick that is. Let's take a look really quick. That is about three eighths of an inch thick steel. This, I plan to chop this guy off right here, make it flat and then weld this bracket onto the body of the camper. I went to my local uh, supply store and I bought these little tabs here. And then my plan is to mount these tabs. These were seven bucks each mount this to this bar right here one of the top one of the bottom when i put it on the camper this is going to open up a little bit wider so the two tabs will be able to fit and then this body this is a piece of an uh, a piece of an old trailer that i had that i took apart so i'm going to use this as the main uh body for the swing out i'm planning on mounting the tire a little bit right here closer to the pivot angle that way not much of the weight is on that end and then on this end i might put uh Maybe a little table and some water can storage. So I was going to do some sort of fancy, uh, what do you call it, swing out mechanism that you buy. But I am a budget channel and I like to work with what I have. So I'm going to be using these. Uh, these should be more than enough to hold the weight of what I'm going to do. If they do start sagging or bending, etc., I will upgrade this in the future. But right now I just want to get something done to take some weight off the tongue. Last time I measured the tongue weight, it was around... 380 pounds i know it's kind of heavy for the size of this trailer so i'm trying to loosen i mean lighten that load off the tongue of the vehicle so i'm going to get started first i'm going to cut this guy apart cut this to length and then i will be back Alrighty, so it is finally tack welded and mounted where it's basically going to go i did a little bit of testing and it is pretty level to how i want it as you can see there, I've only spent so far $14 on it because these ones, these two little tabs were seven bucks each. Everything else I already had in, at home. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put washers on the bottom and the top to lift this guy up. That way uh, you have this space down here instead of up here. So it's not perfect, but it does swing open pretty smoothly right now because basically there is no weight on it and then it comes and it shuts and it's gonna shut right there so like I said uh, my tire will basically sit right here it'll be a little bit offset but it'll sit right here and right here I plan on putting some sort of a something to carry either a propane tank or a water jug and maybe like a little fold out table and that'll swing around and go that way. But I am gonna uh, tack everything into place. Well, I'm gonna weld everything into place and then I will check back in. Alrighty, so the main bar for the swing out tire carrier is mounted. Here's my little setup that I got going back here. I got a, I think this is a three quarter uh, grade A bolt. I welded this pipe here. These, like I said, I had them already. So I welded that guy. Everywhere I could, everywhere I could there. I put some washers, a lock washer, and the nut. It is a little tight to open. And then right here, this is where it's gonna sit and catch. I welded that there, it swings out. It's a little tough to open. It has a little bit of tension on it, but I like it like that. That way it doesn't swing open all crazy. And then when I bring it back, it lands right there. I'm gonna have one of those little pull locks i already have it i'm gonna install it there and then the little tab lock i'm gonna install it back here that way it locks it in the back too right now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna try to figure out where in here i'm gonna place the tire uh, that way i'm able to clear all these components of the rig i might have to place it somewhere right here i don't know yet i'm gonna see how it is but i will be back Alrighty, so this is basically where the tire is gonna sit. Here's my little bar. I'm still, I might, I think I'm gonna put a plate and then just do two bolts there. I think that should be more than enough. 
So I'm gonna try. So the tire hits very little there. I still do have some room. It's just tack welded. I could bring this thing a little bit more out and that should solve that issue. If I do swing it carefully, cause it's not attached. Hopefully the wheel doesn't fall off. It swings pretty nice. Here is basically the setup that I'm running right now. It's just a bar, some supports on both sides and the bars there. I'm still gonna, I'm working on this first and I'm gonna work on all the locking features for it. But like I said, I could go forward a little bit and then I'm gonna mount the plate at an angle over there. That way the tire will just sit in there. I do have an old Toyota hub from the FJ that I might take apart and just use that at the end right there. But I gotta take off all the bearing and stuff. But it hangs pretty nice since all the weight is basically over there. Right here, I think I'm gonna do some sort of water jug storage. That way it'll help me uh, get some of that weight off the tongue. I say at least to set up a weight at least 100 pounds. And I could take at least 100 pounds off the tongue because it is close to four. So that is it. I will check back in once I figure this out. And then once I mount the tire and the little um, lock there, I'll be right back. Alrighty, so this is what I came up with to hold the actual tire itself. These are some studs from the FJ Cruiser that were off my old wheel bearing uh, assembly. So I took that off and then I just used these studs. As you can tell, I didn't drill the holes right. So what I ended up doing is I just used my plasma cutter, cut around there and made the hole bigger. This one, I was able to uh, keep the original hole. I stuck the stud back there. Back here, what I ended up doing is I got a grade eight washer and I put it there on both sides. Then I tacked the studs in place. And I did that. What I did first was I put it on the actual tire. I can't demonstrate it, but I put it. I put it on the tire, I tie it down, that way the bolts are in the exact same spot. And then I tack them in place. So I already tried it and it comes off and on uh, perfectly. This plate, I had it in my scrap pile, so it worked out perfectly. I was originally gonna do one with just two screws, but this has three, so it's more support. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna weld this guy in here. Uh, I'm gonna figure out the alignment and then I'm gonna put it on and then I should be able to mount the tire onto it. Alrighty, I will check back in when that's mounted and the tire is on. All right, so it's welded. Uh, I put a really fat bead on top. The bead under there was a lot nicer, but then I started doing it again and I started getting into the powder coating so I wasn't sticking really well, but the one under there is pretty nice. But anyways, it's already mounted. It feels pretty secure. I was thinking of filling in these little holes, but just in case I have to replace these studs because they bend or something, I'm just gonna leave it like that. I don't think it's really gonna affect it because there's three of them. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna work on the locking mechanism. It fits there pretty nicely. It lifted up when I attached that bracket. So that'll help me out a little bit with the weight because there is gonna be two water jugs here, five uh, gallon water jugs. So that's gonna be pretty heavy and that should uh, help this thing sink down and touch the little base I made for it and if not I could just put some washers or something up here but anyways that is it for that part now I'm gonna work on that I will be right back alrighty so I made a mistake here uh, when I put the tire on there it was too far lean back so it was hitting a lot right there I was still able to close it but I didn't want to have all that pressure right there so what I ended up doing is as you could tell there uh, I cut it with the plasma cutter and I bend it forward. Then I put a little tab of steel here. I filled in the hole there and then I put this little gusset on that side. And uh, I think that should be more than enough for this tire. It's pretty heavy, but I think that should hold the weight. Alrighty, so now I'm gonna continue uh, just touching up the tire carrier and I'm gonna figure out how to make some water can mounts. Alrighty, so after I finish this, the tire it's already mounted and it lines up perfectly. It doesn't hit up there anymore. So what I did next, I was gonna do the water jugs back here, but I'm not sure yet. I might do it, I might not. But I had this little uh, holder. This was for one of those uh, five gallon, uh, the Gatorade, the Igloo water coolers. 
that was off an old war truck rack. So I took it off, I chopped it off. And then this thing fits perfectly. One of these little propane tanks, uh, it'll slide in there. But I think I'm gonna use that right here to mount this propane tank. That way there is more weight back here. Because what I used to do is I used to carry those in the camper, but I don't wanna do that no more. So I want everything outside and just whatever we were, the necessities to be inside the camper. So I cut it off, I welded it there. I welded it there. It's pretty strong and the bumper could take it. Also, the latching mechanism I didn't show, but I put a little piece of tube there, the little latch. These are the eBay special latches. You close that up like so, and it's good. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I might get a pin and drill a hole and just stick it in there just to have a uh, double protection against it swinging open. And then I have the little locking pin that goes on this side that I have not welded yet. But I'm gonna keep continue doing stuff and I will keep uh, documenting my progress. I'll be right back. All right, so here it is in its final stage. Let me guys, let me walk you through the swing out and see how it turned out. So. Here it is, my locking mechanism. The one thing I did not show is I wanted to make a way to keep my propane from getting stolen. So I just welded this little chain here, super low budget, nothing fancy with a lock, nothing like that. This, I did not show the process, but I built this little, I kind of just threw it together. It's made by one by one steel. These are aluminum plates. There's two plates, one here, one at the bottom. And this is meant to hold my little water container. Uh, it's kind of hard to get out uh, when the, when it is full with the water because it expands a little bit so i might uh, either rebuild this or just use this part to carry uh, one of those five gallon uh, steel jerry cans for gas and fuel and then just use that guy on the side make some other mount but that's uh, a little bit later but anyways here we go that's how it looks like i said nothing too fancy so here is the main part which is the tire I ended up putting this little trash bag from Napa on it and this thing did perfectly. Here it is back here, the swing out mechanism, if you want to call it. So what I ended up doing, I actually bought this bolt, the tractor supply and these washers, this nut and this lock washer. I did not have any of this hardware, so I had to go buy it. So that alone cost me maybe, I think it's like eight to $10 because I do it by weight. I still have yet to put the little locking tab a lot of these swing outs have. I had the tab, I just didn't weld it on because I was in a hurry. But what I'm thinking of doing is running a piece of uh, some sort of iron right here just to hold more of the support and to keep this thing from wanting to go that way. One up here too, and maybe one, you can't see, one on this side. But uh, we did already take this guy on a four hour trip back. It was eight hours total and it did perfectly fine. I'm gonna swing this thing out so you can see it. So you basically undo this little hook. I was gonna drill a pin through there, but I didn't get a chance to do it because I didn't have the right drill bit. But like I said, we did take it on a four, uh, eight hour trip total and nothing ever shifted and it stayed very nice and tight. So when you swing it out, it does wanna drop a very, very tiny bit. As you can see, it hits there, but it, it's not heavy, so I can pick it up a little bit and push it up. Here it is extended, the backside right here. I didn't add any sort of support, but this thing is backed up to that. So there's no way in heck that this is gonna come out. This little part I did not show, but this is a little table that I used for my Chinese diesel heater. So it will the, the heater will sit there. Uh, the exhaust and the intake will vent out the bottom of these holes. And then the diesel heater will vent in here into the actual cabin of the square drop. So basically, this is how it is, all painted. I know it's not the prettiest, but it works for all my needs. Here's how the tire is held. Like I said, these are grade A washers. I did weld the washers to keep the hole centered, and I only uh, put a small little tab on the actual bolts to keep them from spinning. But like I said, the bolts line up perfectly. So to close it up, 
you do this you this is a little screw with a little piece of metal i didn't know what to use so i just did that and these are some hinges that were off the old solar panels they're stainless steel hinges so i'm going to close it with one hand so you could see it's not difficult to close and it just pushes in like that you clamp this and it is nice and secure but that is it for the video so thank you guys for watching it please like and subscribe i'm trying to get my subscriber count up so i could keep making more of these videos thank you guys please like and subscribe and we'll see you next time